Hello guys and welcome to the Groovy Puzzlers! <laughs> This is me, Baruch, Jay Baruch at any possible social network, developer advocated Jay Frog. And uh, this is Fred, Freddy33 at the important social networks, <laughs> chief architect at Jay Frog. And uh, this is Jay Frog. The main thing, two main things about Jay Frog, we are obsessed with frogs and we love Java and Groovy. We mm -hmm. have a whole product written mostly in Groovy, and that's the reason we are here talking about the puzzlers. So we are build, we are standing on the shoulders of the real, real giants. Okay, 2001, Oracle World. Who knows those guys? It was Oracle. called it was called Java One at the time. No, the first <laughs> Java puzzlers. Yeah, was the Oracle World? Was on the Oracle World. Voila. Not on, this is an interesting and amusing fact. <laughs> Not on the Java one, but at the Oracle World. Okay. George Block, Neil Gartner, delivering the first Java puzzlers as the typing browser. And they are stepping on the shoulders of another giant. Do you know who they are? Who knows who they are? Who knows? The Glick and Black, mm. that's right. Radio show, which actually was running from the year I was born <laughs> until like two years ago. Still going? Still going? Still going? Still going? Wikipedia said they mm. like stopped and <laughs> two years ago. <laughs> They're lying. Well, the Wikipedia. Okay. okay? Okay. So, how's the rules, guys? Two entertaining guys off stage, it will be us. Funny and puzzling questions. We hope they will be both funny and puzzling. Your participation is important. Okay, so be with us. Vote, think and vote, or just vote. Whatever your mood is today. We have some swag to give you. We have cool t-shirts, super frog t-shirts to give you for correct answers. And we have some froggies for the less correct answers, but still amusing ones, <laughs> or mostly correct ones. So um, if you don't like the size of the t-shirt, come to us, to our booth, and we will uh, trade it with the correct size. We have official Twitter handle, uh, hash GroovyPuzzlers. You are more than welcome to tweet about what you see or what you think about what you see. And the most important thing is no cheating. No Groovy console, no Groovy shell, no IntelliJ, no web console. Please think instead. Who is that? <laughs> <laughs> is it even possible? <laughs> okay. All the puzzlers uh, work, or most of them don't work, at Groovy 2.3.6, and that might change, and some of the things that you see here will behave differently in the following versions. We're all good? Challenge accepted? Yeah. I just have uh, one thing also to Go say. On. There are going to be a lot of uh, WTF, so I don't know for the recording, but it's not going to be safe for children. Yeah, it's not safe for <laughs> children because we are two Europeans which are not afraid of the F word. <laughs> okay, let's go. Fredo, Great. shoot. Uh, yeah, so that's the first time that uh, we did the... Uh, no, uh, we didn't do it at the Greek conference yet. Yet, okay. So, uh, the first puzzling piece of code. A nice uh, conference class, which is so uh, Greek uh, for uh, 2014, initialized here uh, with uh, this kind of format in Groovy. And uh, so, uh, gr.each and uh, println, uh, whatever is passed, to the closure. What will be the output of this beautifully written piece of code? Give me the options. First, so you can see, so this is the list of uh, properties of the class, the name of the property and the value. Class conference, name Gritch, year 2014. So, okay. Or basically uh, just two string of the conference 
class with the hash code. A startup failure, for some reason Groovy doesn't want to run or to compile this code. Don't know why, sometimes he does that. Yeah. <laughs> or it will put the only two properties that we pass uh, to this object, Grich and 2014. So if you ask me, it will be diff because you know there is this each method that comes from uh, the object class in Groovy, and it can do stuff with object, including the object that don't, doesn't look like, like a list or something. So for string, it will print characters. It will uh, iterate over the characters, and for object, it will iterate over the properties. Yeah, so but it's a map here, so maybe this one is more. I go with D. Okay, who else? So how do we do the voting? Who goes with A? Okay, some hands for A. Nice. Who goes with B? Uh, about the same amount for B. Okay. What Who goes C? with C? Yeah. Ah, some people believe, really believe in. Uh, it's hard to believe that Groovy <laughs> won't compile something. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and with D. What for me? Okay. Okay. Good. Well, good you people, you trust me. I love you already. Yeah, why do you trust and him? That was it's very, very like decision <laughs> to trust me. Yeah, so uh, you give t-shirt to the one that? Uh, no, now we ask. Ah, now we why. ask why. So yeah. whoever vote B or whoever now think that he vote B. Can you tell us why? Who know why? Except of core committers back then, you will get t-shirts <laughs> anyhow. But don't spoil the fun. Uh, yeah, Soren. But why he would even call to string when I try to it iterate over something? It will print to string of whatever I iterate over inside this object. Well, it's, not a collection. it's not. It's not a collection. Spr string is not a collection as well, but it iterates over the characters. Someone back there had some assumption. Yeah. Hmm? Excuse me. Okay. So? Yeah, so that's more or less what Soren said. I, mm. what, I'll tell you what I'm missing here. I'm missing the part where Each. the iteration. <laughs> what this is actually doing, yes. Okay, so let's see the answer. We will, we will get, you will get one. So, yeah, later. the main issue is that it's not really an iteration. Okay, if the answer is the actual uh, output of the object. And uh, so, of course, you just need to read the code that was written by some of the guys over there. And uh, if everything fails, just create a collection out of the value. So it does create a collection. <laughs> and the only element of this collection is this object. OK. That's it. So. Now it's evident, it's just iterating, creating a collection of one element and printing an ed this element. Okay, so since I loved to fool the, uh, the audience so much, let's try it again. Shoot me with another one. Okay, so absolutely groovy. Uh, yeah, this one I really, really, really like. So this is, actually, this is the smallest puzzler. Yeah, this of is all definitely all. the smallest puzzler. It's like what? It's much less than a tweet. Can. Okay. <laughs> If I print ln this, what will be the output? Give me some chances. Three? OK, minus three, the absolute yeah. of minus three. Yeah. That sounds logical. No such method error, just for people that don't believe. <laughs> minus three or execution failure? What do you think? Uh, so since uh, I would say three, but because this is what it's supposed to do, but it's not very puzzling, <laughs> is it? So I would assume that for some reason, method apps does not exist on three, and it will be no such method error. No such method error. Yeah. Okay. So let's see for the audience. Now, Who vote for? Hint for you, there might be a puzzler here, which is the right answer is the right answer. That might happen. I don't know if it's <laughs> that one or not. <laughs> So, who vote for A? You are, I love your naive 
Nature. Nice. <laughs> nice guys. Who vote for B? No? You don't trust me anymore after oh, one okay. puzzle? <laughs> we have a lot way to go, to go together. Who vote for C? Ah. Ooh. Ooh. That's the majority. Who vote for D? Okay. Thank you okay. guys for being original and why not, right? So, yeah, the right answer, so by the crowd, it's minus three. Hey, Who knows guys. why? So first, let's do what? what? <laughs> and now, who, who knows? knows why? Yeah, okay, let's try it again. Uh, can the, the dot operator take precedence over the unary minus? Yeah, okay, good the answer. operator? Takes precedence over the unary minus. Yes, okay. this is a t-shirt for sure. <laughs> so here we go. Well, I don't have no, that they are all they're all the same size as we said we will okay. exchange them at our booth. Right. <laughs> all right, good job. Yes. So, so by the way, Groovy Console is the perfect tool to cheat on most of our puzzlers. Don't do that. Yeah. Here it's very, very clear what the problem is. Right? Yeah. You can see the actual Java generated code from the Groovy Console, and you can see that the minus came after the apps. So simple fix. You just add parentheses. Says, or write some nice looking code. <laughs> yeah, but I would stay with parentheses. No, come on, this I is would nice. Say, I would stay with parentheses. You will see later why. OK, so now yeah. I, have, I have a question for you. I put this stuff in IntelliJ. I run this code with parentheses. I run this code, and I get nothing. Yeah. Why? You didn't print anything. OK, so you know what? I will add two string to that. Ah. Print length to that. Print How length. That? Ah, yeah. So what this will do? Give me the options. Minus three. Still. <laughs> three. <laughs> this time we are OK. Three and null pointer exception, just for the fun of it. Minus three and null pointer exception. I go for three because we just fixed it, guys. Yeah. Didn't we? For B. Who goes for A? Minus three. R you, you're right. There is no sense. We had parentheses. <laughs> we must be good now, <laughs> right? B. Three. Ah, you don't trust me. Okay. okay yeah. <laughs> you have to get one right first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll do my best. Who goes for C? Okay. C. And D. Okay, wow, wow guys, guys you you're are, good. You are sharp. Yeah. You are. And uh, who knows why? <laughs> well, it's because of the, uh, it gets confused with the parentheses, so it does the parentheses first, and then you have nothing you know, returned from that, and that's, you're doing the ABS. Very, very good. A, that's another t-shirt. I'm on. afraid we are going to <laughs> run out of t-shirts. <laughs> no, good it's job. Okay. There is not that many puzzlers. Okay, here we go for the proggy. So we will we'll pretend that it wasn't a good answer. It wasn't the perfect answer, so it's a proggy only. How about that? Okay, so the problem is that we hate parentheses. We all hate parentheses, and we expect a compiler to figure it all out. Yeah. Right? Yeah, well, yeah. like we, we just saw, you just add parentheses, and everything will work better. But the null pointer exception is very clear, because if you do it in some Groovy console again, you will see the problem exactly. You cannot invoke method up on the null object because this is the null object. Just add more so, parentheses. Yeah. So the, <laughs> every problem can be solved with another <laughs> pair of parentheses. Right? Yeah. So uh, just do it. We didn't put the full output here. You can so, do yeah, it. So you throw in some more parentheses and everybody yeah. got, got and everything got fixed, including this one. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Good. Oh. This is the Keep writing correct less code. appealing option. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There is a joke about uh, um, Japanese that stole part of the half of the source code of some nuclear uh, reactor and it was written in Lisp, but they couldn't do anything because it was just closing parentheses all the way. <laughs> OK, uh, so by the way, for all the Groovy puzzlers, if you have some, 
uh, please send them either to the Twitter handle or uh, we will mention it in and, the end. Uh, we, the, we, to the we, turf. we know but how this to treat guys. That's for sure. So Ken, uh, he's not here, but thanks for Ken. He will go, gonna get a T-shirt for that. He already got it, but he's okay, the one that proposed Okay, now that. it's my turn. Good. So the next one is Max Power. So this is what we have read for you. I have a list that I try to put some stuff in it. Three numbers, 56, 9, and 74. I perform max hmm. a method, which has the flavor to have an enclosure when we determine what is the logic to base our max calculation on, and then I print it. Okay. And you take only the item that are below 50? Yeah, because this is what I care about. Okay. So, so. You, wanna, you wanna answers? Well, first of all, who wrote code like that? <laughs> I won't comment on that. <laughs> so, you might get class cast exception when yeah. you try to convert string to integer. You might get nine, which actually, this is the only item below 50, so this will be the max. How about 56? Okay, Why if not? you want one, right? it's not big. And no. uh, maybe now, because mm -hmm. uh, we return now here, so yeah. maybe it will be now. Hmm. What do you say, Fred? Uh, well, the first thing, yeah, for sure, uh, someone is really trying to write very shitty code here. Uh, I repeat myself. Um, but this is a character, and it needs to be an integer. So I think you tried to trick me here. And um, if I do my Groovy console here and I take nine as a character and I ask Groovy to convert it to an integer, I get 57. You see? Good 56, job, 57. good job, Fred. Good job. So actually, this is what you're going to have. Yes, exactly. So, so 56, 57, and 74. Nobody's below 50. Everybody's null. So I think I will go with null. So let's try the answers again. Class cast exception, nine. 56 or null? I go with null. Guys, what do you think? Fred thinks it will be null. Who, who thinks it will be class cast exception? Yeah, right, we explained that it won't. <laughs> who thinks it will be nine? Yeah, okay, we just said nine is not here anymore, but why not? Uh, how about 56? Okay, couple of hands on 56. <laughs> and Fred, you are a trustable person. I have no idea why. People don't know you enough. Who thinks it will be null? Hands up, you stop voting then. Uh, yeah, here yeah. Is, it's not fair, people didn't vote. Yeah, there is some that just vote. absentee. You I don't have the right to be an absentee. You don't know, but <laughs> we won't count it against you. Come on, just vote. Okay, so uh, you think it's now? It's 56. Wow, so that's a typical WTF. <laughs> <laughs> now you might ask why it's 56. Well, I'll explain you why. The thing is that you might have any list with any numbers in it. If max of all the numbers will return null, the first element will be taken as a max. Why? Because. No one knows why. <laughs> it's not documented. <laughs> this is how it works. Just remember it. The first one is always the best one. <laughs> Okay, my turn. Primitive road, no, war no warning sign. So I really, really like primitive, especially now with the groovy uh, static compile and uh, things like that. But uh, here is another piece of code that uh, doesn't make any sense, but... Um, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> doesn't make but sense. it's groovy. <laughs> Define an x to be equal to int, print ln. If x equal long, print ln. If x equal boolean, print ln. Give me the answers. Let's see. So what if so, you can come with yeah, me. I don't know what you, what the writer of this code actually it's tried to puzzle. do. It's your puzzle. It's your puzzle, Fredo. Everybody know who wrote but it. It's your puzzle. <laughs> Go ahead. Show me the answer. So, startup error here. Okay. I don't know. Maybe Groovy, for once, we say, no, I cannot yeah. do that. Everybody that, still <laughs> thinks that Groovy will start up anyway, <laughs> even with this code. Okay. Int long boolean. 
Javalang integer, Javalang long, and Javalang boolean, or int? int. What do you say? So it's definitely startup error. There is no way that this code is going to compile. Ah. It doesn't make any of them, doesn't make any sense. OK. So guys, what do you say? Who, Who thinks like Baro? A. All right, wow. so no, still no trust. Okay. <laughs> okay, I got it. Who think it will print whatever it's supposed to print? Int long boolean. Couple of hands, guys. You are messing with us seriously. <laughs> now you have two options. Whoever didn't vote, select one of them. C. Who thinks C? Thank ah, you very much. Okay. That's better. Who thinks D? Yeah, just for, oh, OK, good guys. Good, good, yeah. you, you, you understand that it doesn't make any sense, right? OK. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, uh, just first, before I answer, it's an equal here. It's yeah, not an no, equal equal. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's not very condensed. So for once, we. Yay! Not Bravo, Baro, and. It won't start like <laughs> badly, epically. <laughs> Three times. For once, we can say. Come. OK, yeah. now you trust me. Good. Wait for the next one. So, so yeah, there is uh, actually something that uh, you can say is that uh, this piece of code here actually compile and print int. int. So the first part is completely OK. That was the easy one. And this one is not OK. This one is not OK because this is not a Boolean expression. IntelliJ is telling you, by the way, when you do the underscore. So right. the, uh, the x equal Boolean is not evaluated by Govi as a Boolean expression. So what about this one? Who thinks it's this a good one? Who thinks this one will run? We just added parentheses, guys. Clue, parenthesis, fix, everything. <laughs> <laughs> it is good. <laughs> parenthesis, guys. Nice. Come on. Of course it is good. Yeah. Ah. That's why. Exactly. And uh, yeah, you can, uh, <laughs> like Bao said, when you put parentheses in Groovy, everything works. So the thing <laughs> is, Groovy truth can hurt sometimes. Because what mm. we have here is an expression that might be Boolean, so let's make it work and see what's going on. Yeah. In Java, that won't happen, by the way. So in the original code, by the way, if you added more parentheses around the uh, Boolean, the last if, it will have actually run. There was actually only two guys that said that it will do a startup error. We, we need to give them either a t-shirt or a, a froggy. Let's give them a froggy. Let's give them that was froggy. quite a success. Who was it? And me. I said <laughs> startup error. Where is my froggy? OK. Good job. OK, so. next one is mine because it's politically complicated. <laughs> so statement first, all the reassembles is purely coincident. OK? We are going to talk about delegating your work. So there is some guy that a lot of people delegate to. A lot of people delegate to. And he is the one who does the work. OK? So let's talk about that for a little bit. Here we have a script. And the name of the script is important not only. That's just a string. It doesn't mean any, it doesn't make any sense. Just a string. But that's the, name of the, that's the name of the script. Then we have an import of simple Ruby doc class. And we alias it as delegate. And then we have an object that called delegate from a class ghostwriter. Ghostwriter typically tries to write some book. Again, we have no idea what this book is, right? <laughs> we don't know. OK? And then we have print. This print tries to print an output of a closure. In this closure, we print the simple name of the delegate class. So far, so good? Fredo? Yeah, it's the dot call of the closure. It's yeah, the so output. this is the, the call. Oh. We try that. We will print the output of the closure. OK. You want to see the options? Uh, yeah. So first is the ghostwriter, because the ghostwriter is the name of the class of the delegate uh, instance. The other will be startup error, 
which might happen because we have conflicts, a lot of conflicts. Yeah, too right? many delegates. How about the name of the script? Which is the That's delegate. The third option. And the name of the class that we imported as the fourth option. Okay. Yeah, so as I always said, it's the one that wrote this code is amazing. You understand so that Fred <laughs> wrote all of the puzzles, right? <laughs> He's just flattering himself. Yeah, so one thing you need to know when you do Groovy, don't try to override your name and delegate, delegate, delegate. Uh, so there is three delegates. The normal answer will be A. And since it's a puzzler, I think I will go for D, actually. D. I think the import is taking precedence. It's, it's just a pure lottery, right? You just need to pick one. They aren't conflicting. Yeah, so exactly, one. yeah. OK, good. So yeah, there is, yeah, there is this delegate, this delegate, this delegate, and startup error. Because they're all delegates. Yeah. OK, so yeah, Fred went with D. B. Let's do, who thinks is A? A couple of hands, OK. How about B? We have a lot of conflicts. Groovy might complain about it. I see a hand from Peter, and guys, this means something. <laughs> right? Peter knows he's groovy. And he said, start a error, guys. Listen to him. How about the name of the script? Huh? OK. How about the name of the script? Which is the delegate? OK, a couple of hands. Guys, don't be shy. We really won't come to the game. Yeah, I'm not Even against the gurus. No, no, I, it's not fair. It's everybody follow my recommendation. That's you all. think so? Yeah. Who, Who votes for D? Who follow Fred's recommendation? Yeah, 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 you see? Compare it to the last time, it's like a third <laughs> of people still believe in you. <laughs> OK, guys. So the correct answer is A. Wow. It actually behaves normally. I'm not sure. <laughs> We still have conflicts. So let's play this game that I will take the correct answer away, and we will try it again. So okay. now I comment out the uh, I comment out the, the ghost rider. Okay. Start up error. Any believers? Yeah, okay. How about the name of the script now? Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. How about C. Fred's option now? Yeah. Guys, you can vote a new. Okay, <laughs> it's not that if you voted differently last time. It's a new game. Okay, nice, nice. Well, the correct answer is C. This Yay! Time. Finally. Okay, now, did you notice that the guys in the name of the script never do the work? <laughs> that explains, like, a lot. <laughs> guys, I have to say, Groovy in Action, second edition, is the most awesome technology book I ever wrote. I suggest it to everybody warmly. It's feature complete. It has all the chapters. And I think the only reason they don't print it so they can continuously improve it. OK? So go and buy this book. It's awesome. OK. So my turn. Who done it? Uh, so we're going to start now to do some uh, actually some kind of groovy code that I, um, that I like because it's a lot more closure and closure or oriented. So it's just the definition of a closure, OK, which return a closure. Uh, which it's a method, actually. Which it's a method that return a closure. Yep. The butler did it. And we just do println of the method call. Let's do it. Give me the answer. For once, it's a nice looking code. Yeah, you I have told to, you. This you is have mine, of course. <laughs> yeah. OK. Go ahead, Fred. So what will output. be the output? Null pointer exception. No. For some reason. The actual uh, value of the closure the itself. Yeah. Uh, a startup error. Or the, plain, the butler did it, the actual so output of the closure. So if you ask me, closure. it will be the butler did it. But since you like this code, it should be complete bit inside. So I would say, because we don't call here dot .call, like in the previous example, it will actually print the closure, the two string of the closure, which will be B. So you vote for B? Yes. So who vote for A? OK, yeah, cool. that, that doesn't matter. Okay. Who vote for B? Yeah! Oh, you're good, you're good. Who yeah, vote for I, C? I answered once, right. <laughs> <laughs> 
Ah, cool. Ok, ok, ok. Who vote for D? The butler did it. Ok, guys, who knows? Ok, so first. Yeah. So the right answer is C. There was really, really a few. Yeah. They yeah. Need, uh, they need okay. A frog. Now the answer is why. Yeah. Who knows why? Graham. There is no assignment. So what? <laughs> <laughs> Graham, enlighten us, please. No, no, wait. There is no return. No. No T-shirt for you. So Guillaume, you know. Yes. Good. So he has the right of a t-shirt. That's not fair. That, he's only one who answered. <laughs> if I had any other answer, including Graham, by the way. <laughs> okay, we will play this for something valuable. <laughs> so yeah. So the right answer from uh, from Guillaume. There was actually four people that say that it will be a startup event. But they just guessed. So <laughs> that's. <laughs> That's exactly that. The parser is actually confused with an empty statement block or if it's actually a closure block because there is no uh, command in the front that expects a closure or whatever. So by just adding this character here, the parser now knows that it's a closure and everything will work and the cat will okay, be Okay, so now this is a code which is mandatory in Java 8 lambdas. In Java 8 lambdas, you have to put this separator even if you don't have any parameters. Groovy is so awesome mm -hmm. that there are very rare cases where you actually need it. In most of the cases, it will work just fine. When it's needed, IntelliJ will tell you. Yeah, you can trust IntelliJ. <laughs> that will come as well. So, um, we kind of uh, did this puzzler video for the great Groovy community of Madrid, their user group. And after this video, they send us quite a lot of puzzlers. This is one of them, and this guy already got his awesome mm. t-shirt. Mm. Okay, next one I really love. Yeah. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I will give you a second. Yeah, so he wrote the code, this one. <laughs> Just. Okay, so what we have here, <laughs> and Cedric, you are not allowed to answer to this one is that we have a class and it has a method me that returns the object that we asked for it. Okay, and we have another class, Dr. Jekyll. And then we mix in Mr. Hyde Into to Dr. Dr. Jekyll. Okay? And now we have two objects which are from the same class. Both of them are new Dr. Jekyll. One of them is cast as Dr. Jekyll, the other was not. And we have those objects in hand which are returned by this method. Okay, so far so good, friend. You follow me? <sighs> and now, How can I follow you with this kind of code? And now we just print. <laughs> so, first of all, we ask, we do two string on Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, here. Right, this is normal to string. It will print class name at a hash. And then we take their class of those objects and do equals on them. Trivial, Fred. I don't know what I'm confused about. Uh, this is so simple. Yeah, everybody is very clear about this code. No, no, no confusion. It's clear as <laughs> hello world, <laughs> written in Lisp. Okay, here are your options, Fred. This is the first one. Dr. Jekyll, this is the two string of Dr. Jekyll class, and Mr. Hyde, this is the two string of Mr. Hyde class. Are they the same? The equals of the class return true. <laughs> this is first option. The second is it returns false. The third, they print the same class, which is, I remind you, the one that we do new on it, and equals gives true as well. And the other, the, the other one is that they print the class that we are casting to. Mr. High. Yeah. No, the, the, uh, whatever that we are mixing in. The me. And are they the same folks? All right? Those are the options. Fred, what do you say? It doesn't make any sense. Uh, it, uh, it, there, is, there is a correct answer here that behaves exactly as it should behave. Trust me. 
So it's C. I mean, it's C. Uh, Mr. Hyde is a Dr. Jekyll. Dr. Jekyll is a Dr. Jekyll. So C. Who thinks it's A? That Ooh. was very bold. <laughs> Who thinks it's B? They are, after the mixing, they should be different without, okay, nice. Who thinks it's C? Yeah, Fred, <laughs> your trust went down. And who thinks it's D? Yeah, yeah. okay, most of the guys think it's D. Uh, yeah, because we mix stuff, okay, okay. Well, the correct answer is A. A. Wow, the t-shirt. No, we need to hear that he knows what no, he uh, He's the only one that uh, <laughs> raises his no, hand. that's a froggy. Okay. <laughs> Catch. Okay, so I assume there is no, uh, no reason to ask <laughs> if someone knows why, right? <laughs> okay, so... Uh, wait, wait, no, there... So? So when you, uh, when he does the mixing, it creates like a epoxy pass around it. Okay. Okay. So now you stay with A and B. This is a very good observation. Now what do you choose between A and B? So yeah, that, after that, you that are. That was very good. Yeah, actually. very good. That yeah. was very good. They definitely yeah. deserve a froggy. Yeah. So Thank the you very much. yeah, the next thing is why true. Oh, sorry about that. Why the class are the same? So we will get to it. This is the explanation that you just said. We are mixing stuff one into another, right? <laughs> so we take one class and we mix it into another class. <laughs> okay? But inside the mix and meta class, it goes over all the properties of the another class and adds them, all of them. But what get properties will return among the, the normal properties? the get class method. So get class get transferred from one class to another together with all the rest of the properties. And this is clearly a bug. The reason we included here... Well, he, he accepted it. The reason we included it here because it wasn't a bug until we did it in the puzzlers. <laughs> So, yeah, it was opened actually yesterday by Cedric. So, the t shirt goes to Charlie, who sent us this marvelous puzzler, and to Cedric, who actually understood what's going on and filled the bag. And probably he is the one who is going to fix it as well, I would assume. Uh, but still, they should behave. Okay, Fredo. Great. Go for it. Okay. So, yeah, it's just, so we go back in time. <laughs> 1985. Wow. 1985. Final countdown. So. Who was alive in 1985. <laughs> okay, just kidding. So, this one uh, is not so dirty code. There is a little bit here and there. But uh, basically, a nice uh, countdown class that uh, initializes a counter to 10. And a method that returns this countdown object. Uh, and it's the final countdown. Uh, yeah. And so basically it's creating the object, setting the counter to minus minus the counter. Who wrote code like that? Nobody raise hand? Okay, good. <laughs> you just said it's a nice code. It catch an exception, if you think that there will be an exception in this line. Uh, that will never happen. That totally makes sense. That should never happen. And it sets the value of the counter to mean value. In the finally, it returned the actual object here that was defined. And so basically, the dot counter on the final countdown, println here, what will be the output? Give me the options. Startup failure. Sometimes. I would say it's a valid code. That will never happen. That will never happen. Next. Yeah. Nine. That's the correct answer. Oh, OK. Or 10. Of course, it, I know, I know. It will be 10. And you, you're so silly. Of course, it will be 10. There are no parentheses. Of course, it will be 10. <laughs> <laughs> this is so simple. You must yeah, yeah. be kidding. So, who votes for A? OK, valid code. Who yeah, votes for B? It happens sometimes. B. 
OK, a couple of hands. A couple of hands. Who vote for C? OK. Um, OK. Yeah, and that, they just vote for C because they don't believe me. Yeah. Who okay. vote for D? Ah, the parenthesis is one. Yeah, yeah, the parentheses are always yeah, yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. so, so you got tricked big, big, big time. OK. Uh, there was actually quite a couple of people that voted for the right answer. B, that will never happen. So now, who knows why? Uh, you will have to explain us again. Ah, uh, the... Like that. Yeah. And what will it do? What will yeah. change then? Hmm. OK. Hmm. And what will happen then? Why yeah, what, what kind of exception here will be thrown? <laughs> well, yeah, I, I mean, that it so prints that will, it print a land that will never happen. There is an ignored exception here that is thrown by. Okay, by so the code. it is a froggy, and just because you voted correctly, <laughs> not because of the explanation. <laughs> so, well, ah, yeah, a little bit uh, of uh, that's my job. Actually, when you uh, look at the actually ignore no, no, the exception, is the exception. Yeah. this is the exception. Cannot cast object nine with class integer to class count down. Any guesses now? Why? This was a hint. Did you make any sense now? <laughs> yeah, that was the idea, guys. You are the groovy puzzler. OK, give, them to, give it to them, Fred. Come on. No? No. Well, they, they, this gave it to me. So this is the actual code generated by Groovy. You can look at it at the Groovy console. You go to SD browser, and you see the generated source code. This is the generated source code. Return. Why did Groovy add a return to this try statement? OK? It's the last statement of the block. It's a method that should return a countdown, so it's returning the actual last statement of the block. But like, I don't know. Who does return in their finally block? I have a shotgun. <laughs> So that was my point about it. But if you want to solve the error, always add 42. How about that, guys? <laughs> Doesn't mean any. OK, let's, let's try it now. Yeah. This actually works. This will do the correct job you and add return 9. Here. Let's be frank, you can add any expression here. And then it will work. <laughs> so. Who knows why it will work then with 42? Why? That's for sure because it works, okay. but the question is why? OK. Very there good. is another statement, so we will not add the return here. And it will not add the return. By the way, on the previous code, there was return here also. But now there is a statement in the end of the method, so this one will return, and this one will still return because this comes. This is in the finally. It will actually behave correctly. Okay. Guess what? It's another bug. Discovered yesterday as well, yeah. filled yesterday as well, and yeah. it exists only because of the groovy pattern. Okay. I, I will add a comment. If you do return in your finally block, yeah, and I have with a with shotgun at home. Of someone being <laughs> shot with the shotgun. Okay. So Ivan Lopez already got his t shirt. Cedric is more than welcome to get as many as he likes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good. Okay, and uh, next one is mine. I'm going back in time to my uh, <laughs> homeland. It's not my homeland, but it, this is where I was born. And we're going to talk about public property. Who wanted a puzzle about traits? Here we go. So we have a trait with a public property. I'm on public. This is string, very trivial code. And then I have a class that implements public. Inherits whatever, Makes and sense. I create a new object. Now my no question for you, Fred, will okay. be: How can you access this public property? 
I will give you four options as usual. The first add with property. the add operator to access a property. Okay. To access a field. The field of. The other is <laughs> some random cryptic code. <laughs> Third will be get property yeah. because you know Groovy yeah. will generate getter and you can call it. And the first will be like Groovy property. Yeah. I. I I mean, that sounds logical. D should work and just that's access. Beautiful, that's beautiful code. You love that, this code. Yeah. It includes I, a lot of socialism that you love. <laughs> you should be into it. No. Accessing public property for me has no problem. No problem. Uh, I don't like to do getter in my groovy code anyway, so I vote for D. OK, guys, who votes for A? Nobody. It's okay, a nice. one hand. Thank you very much for being brave. Who votes for B? Quite a bunch of hands. <laughs> Who votes for C? Thank you. And D? Ah, uh, you see? You okay. still have believers, Fred. Good. I have no clue why. <laughs> because you keep failing them. Yeah. What? What is this public underscore underscore? <laughs> why not underscore now minus? Okay. Okay. Go ahead, you have two questions for me. What's public underscore underscore? Can, why not public underscore dash underscore dash underscore? Asterisk. Yeah. Yeah. And where, how am I supposed to know that it should be public underscore underscore? So first of all, in Soviet Russia, you do not access public property. <laughs> the cryptic name exists, <laughs> so you won't know it and you won't be able to access it. That's the reason. Ah, OK. I'm not supposed to do public property in trades. And if you ask why and how you should know it, the answer is read the trades docs. It's okay. all documented here. So trades uh, document, documentation page is one of the few pages in the marvelous new Groovy documentation site. And it was already written there. And it's very, very um, complete. And this is what it said. This is how you access it, and you shouldn't do it. Oh, OK. It is not recommended to use and consider as bad practice. Right. Oh, OK. So it's to avoid conflict of the property name between traits when you mix the traits Next time, in your class. we will do with the delegate, we will add traits into it. <laughs> <laughs> a trait that creates a delegate as a public property? Yep. Yeah, OK. Go ahead. Fred you on. really like to write shitty code. Um, <laughs> okay, next. Out of range. Um, so there is some uh, really nice code me that I use a lot actually in the, when, I, when I do some Groovy, uh, which is the ability to uh, define ranges. And so here I just define range between 1.0 and 10.0, just a range of uh, real numbers. Uh, I assert that the range contains the 5.0 value and I print ln the output of range.contents 5.6. What do you think will be the uh, output of this? This is very simple. The assertion will fail. Range does not contain the 5.0. It does. B, print ln the range does not contain 5.6. It does. C, true. It is. And null pointer exception, just to confuse you. You didn't. OK. It's C. <laughs> it's C? I told you there is a puzzler that actually works. <laughs> this is it. Because yeah. 1 to 10 con contains 5.6. Yeah. If you remember Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, the kind of code that he's capable of reading, don't trust him too much. So who votes for A? Right. Of course, it does not contain. Who votes for B? <laughs> Who vote for C? Thank you very much, guys. I appreciate okay. it personally. Who vote for D? <laughs> Null pointer exception? Why? Because it's groovy puzzlers. <laughs> <laughs> People know what we are capable of. No, why? Okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm really, really happy because it proved that everybody that is actually doing computer, when you define a range, even if it's with let's, let's a real it. number, we will get it. it's actually B false. So, why? This is me, I'm very sad. <laughs> now. In a range, everything in an integer. 
Go ahead, Tom. The range of, say, all integer As a reach of, The no. range is all integer. integer. Yeah, that's the same, that's the that's, same, that's the that's same. That's a froggy, but that's an, it's no, not no, additional. It's, it's not. I saw some hands there. Good. Yeah, it's integer, it's integer plus one, two, Good. When it increments, that's a T-shirt. T-shirt. <laughs> it increment see. by one. It's let's actually. See, let's see how your football skills are. No, Go no. ahead and throw it. No, there is no I'll way. Do, I'll do the simple one. I'll throw the froggy. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! That's my touchdown. <laughs> good one. Good one. Where have you been on Sunday? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. I, I mean, that's you define the range. It's actually an object range of real number. No, that's an object range of yeah. whatever. It's not a primitive range. And uh, like he said, every uh, object range is actually, when it does the contains, it goes over the iteration. It of goes, the range. it creates an iterator. Okay? And the iterator for it, by the way, not documented, the <laughs> <anchor>. <laughs> welcome, <contribution>. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now th this is it. It's based on, the contain is based on the iterator, and the iterator only goes through numbers. Numbers. And but it's still... Uh, we have a major disagreement here, because next slide is mine, and we will see who is going to... Uh, we will ask who agrees yeah. with me. So, contains is about fixes, of course. There is yeah. a method contains. Uh, by the way, there is good Javadoc. Yeah. <laughs> so now, I would say that... This is wrong because 1 to 10 contains 5.6. It is. It's words. Words have meanings. <laughs> so this is my proposal. I don't care for the actual implementation of the class. I don't care if it's object range or real range, continuous range, or whatever. Just make a special class for this kind of range and delegate contains to contains with its mouth. Then contains will have the meaning it has in the English, uh, yeah. in the English language. And then you can fix this issue that has been open for six years now. <laughs> Thank you very much. OK. I, I don't know. Be so let's, let's vote. <laughs> Who thinks that, con that contains, contains should have done true? There is a contains within range, remember. Ah, okay. you see, I okay. won. Okay. I won. I'll sit here <laughs> by my own in the dark on the corner. No, the, okay. I don't know. For me, the main issue is that uh, after, at the end of the day, the range is becoming an iterator and a, and a collection. And so when you do contains on a collection, it has the meaning of a collection. Yeah. Scott actually did this puzzler a very long time ago. We just took it as it is. I'm not even sure he's aware that he's entitled for t-shirts. <laughs> If, if you will ever ask, we definitely will give it to you. Okay. Good. Pirate Bay. I'm starting the first one, you do the... So, you know, there is Talk Like a Pirate Day, and it's kind of next week, I think. So we will have a little, we will do a little practice. Here. Yeah. The trivia map. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I love map and groovy maps. And uh, here is another beautiful piece of code uh, again. Uh, def key equal an X, so a nice uh, string, Java strings. And create a map with the key. And uh, the value of this key is going to be equal to treasure. Just get the key uh, inside the value and print ln whatever the map.get is the output. So, Bao, what do you think will be the output of this completely me, standard piece of code? Options. No such element exception. Uh, I don't think so. Null. Uh, why would it be null? Treasure. Treasure, that makes sense. Blue screen of death. <laughs> this is mech. I'm, going to, I'm definitely going with blue screen of death. Yeah, this, this is what I like. That's for sure. Okay, so. let's vote. Who thinks A? No, why, which one you vote for? A, oh, don't, D, don't. I told you. Ah, you vote for D? Of course. OK, I'm sticking to <laughs> OK, A? who vote for A? OK, a couple of hands. Who vote for B? Whoa. Whoa. So you see everybody. Anyone thinks that it C. will do what it's supposed to do? C. No bias. <laughs> no Blue bias. screen of that. That can always, that's always <laughs> a possibility, guys. 
Always. We actually so, had blue screen of this on stage on our talk with Fred previous spring one. I'm a, I'm a little bit disappointed. It's not puzzling at all. Everybody knows that it's going to be null. How come? It's the key here, and it's so who knows why? Yeah, go ahead. Some new guys. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. That is a string. Perfect. Very, very good. See? By default, key is literal ah, no matter so. what. <laughs> and the IntelliJ will hint you that it is a string. That it is a string. Right? It's a good job, string. guys. You know you're groovy. Well done. Yeah. So, yeah, in the map, the key is the literal object. So, no we have what. some fixes for you. you put First of all, parentheses. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. No, it's all. Oh. OK. Uh, you can use put of the, um, of the, of the map. Uh, you can do this strange <laughs> code that will work, but definitely not the, way, not the best way to fix it. And of course, yeah, this one is good. Best. Except for parents. Parents are always one. Right? <laughs> that's like a dick. OK, now I have another one on the same note for you. So now we are going to complicate it a bit. And we will assume that there are two roots for the same treasure. OK. So we'll take our map, and we will put two roots to the treasure instead okay. of just one. OK? And now I already saw this neat trick with <laughs> the dollar doing, yeah, with doing <laughs> the string out of string and out of int again. And I'm getting the value and printing it. OK? Hmm. Want to see the options? Yep. Here you go. No such element exceptions just for the record for the previous one. No, it's going to do it. Now, that shouldn't happen because we just fixed it. It's not the most elegant fix, but it still should work. This time, Treasure. it will work. Or how about the kernel panic? <laughs> <laughs> OK. Uh, yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a string here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it should be B. It should be B. Again? Yeah. We fixed it. No, never. <laughs> You're never going to fix it. A. <laughs> OK, we can skip, skip A. <laughs> Who thinks B? All right. Who thinks that we actually fixed it? C. Oh, OK. Good. 50-50. How, how, uh, Colonel Panic, anyone? <laughs> All right. It's hey! moving again. Yay! <laughs> New, new hands, new hands, guys. Yeah, go ahead. OK. But we just said, said that everything that is a string. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, Again, I put here two, and as we spoke, it's all strings, and then I access it as a string. Yeah, that, that's a good thing, because it should be string. Ah, OK. You say if I put number here, it will do something else. It's a hash code. Any other suggestions, Soren, to the rescue? Thank you very much. Is exactly. there something that you want from the table? <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of a. Uh, but yeah. By default, key is literal no matter what except numbers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Clear and documented behavior. Exactly. What else do we want? Okay, so if we are going to print the class of this one, we will get an int. And then, of course, we cannot get it as a string. Yeah, it is confusing, I would say. You just need to know it. Just, you just need to know I, I kind of disagree that he, he didn't give a correct answer the first time, because an integer and it's. Oh, OK, here we go. And Guillaume already <laughs> sits with his t-shirt, so yeah. You, you, are in, uh, you are already uh, liable for the next one, for the next edition. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. OK. Save the date. That's uh, mine, this one. Yeah, this is yours. OK, the new spring. So we have a nice uh, list 
of a long, one, two, three. And uh, we create a date, a new date object, and we just add it to this list of long here. And we print in the whole list. OK? What do you think will be the output of this println? Give me options. Startup failure. That makes sense because the you try to put a date long, inside the long. I try to put date into it. B, one, two, three, and the date as a two Did string. Did I hit the hour correctly? <laughs> September 10, CDT. Or one, two, three, and Groovy will convert the date to a long and provide the long as a date time. Okay, now I'm a true believer in Groovy, so I would say this should work because okay. Groovy will do his magic cusp okay. to convert date to, to a long, mm, to and a it's long. actually capable of doing it because date is wrapping mm. along inside, you know, the time, mm. etc. So it will be perfect. Okay, exactly like uh, the nine character in the... Exactly in like the nine character in the previous example with the max with power. Maximum. Right. Okay, C. So, who and vote... there is a D. Ah, uh, there is also. a D? Yeah. Ah, class cast exception. Because okay, we try to add cast the, the date too in. Too, too, long. In, yeah. too long. Yeah. Ah, okay. Uh, who vote for A? Startup failure. No compilation. Uh, Nobody. People oh, just yeah. can't grasp how Groovy can not fail on compilation. <laughs> okay, I got it. <laughs> Yep. B. Who vote for B? Wow, okay. majority. Okay. Who vote for C? It would be nice yeah. if it would work that C. way, wouldn't it? <laughs> Who vote for D? Ah, good. Class okay, okay, good. okay. It's not, it looks like Java. Groovy looks like Java, but it's not. Oh, okay. So the right answer is uh, like everybody knew B. <laughs> But I think I know why. <laughs> That's because the arranger. <laughs> Not that arranger. The other arranger. <laughs> that arranger. In the bytecode, ordinary classes, interface, and methods, no type checks. So you can put yeah. everything and everything. Yeah. But so, yeah. Well, Shouldn't it check in the compile time? So there is. Now it's uh, groovy 2.3. So the answer is no. What? This is a very dirty statement, but it's true. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> well, uh, that's not the kind of sentence to put in the brain of Guillaume. And uh, here we go <laughs> with long, long date, and we can also put a a string into there and print the types. They will be as you expect them to be. Yeah. And here we go with one of the latest and the most important editions. Compile static. In Groovy language, with Groovy 2, the compile static. Now you can actually make Groovy to fail at the compilation at this time. When you add a compile static annotation, then it just won't compile. OK, you remember that once startup failure, it will happen more often, which is a good thing, right? Yeah. Isn't it? So when you are playing with actually a uh, um, uh, generalized list, and, uh, yeah. so it's better to actually apply compile starting from time to time when it's oh. simple like that. OK, next one. <laughs> My puzzle is called What's the Metaglass Frederick? Because Fred. What's the frequency can it? <laughs> so, this is what we do we have a map. Under the key of Metaglass, I put the value of frequency. And then I print len What's the Metaglass Frederick? Here are your options. Who would code like that? Come on. Meeting method exception. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Fred, this is a beautiful code. <laughs> Me, uh, I don't see any reason. I mean, meta class already exists. Uh, it exists in the map, and now it exists in every class. So there okay, is no good. So we actually it. have two, which is yeah. the way we love. The more the, the more the merrier, right? Okay. So now this will print what's, what's the, the and the two string Ooh. of the meta class. 
Predator. Okay. Third option will be what's yeah. the two string of the map? Yes. Frederick? That sounds good. And the four will be what's the frequency, Frederick? Huh. So what do you say? I think I vote for C actually. Just this will be resolved and this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Who thinks it will be A? Yeah, okay. There is mm. obviously some method meta class. What about B? Hmm. Okay, 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 okay. A lot of fans for B. Who is with Fred this time? This puzzler is named after him. So maybe he deserves C. some credit here. Zero, Fred. You went for <laughs> almost everybody well, trusts you to zero. I think it's missing actually. I wanted to put here you know, dot meta class. Dot meta class. The string. Okay. Yeah. And what about D? Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. guys, I told you there is some puzzler that might behave. As expected. <laughs> and this is it. <laughs> now, yeah. the question is, why did it work? <laughs> because we have two options for meta class. Who knows? Yeah, hey, but you don't have any t-shirts on the table, so go ahead. Okay. Okay, and then what happens with the original meta class? Yeah, thank you very much. That's definitely a t-shirt. So yeah, yep. the thing Good. is, we have an operator overloading problem. <laughs> he doesn't look like James. <laughs> doesn't look like James? No. Sorry. <laughs> ah, that's, the bird. that's before. <laughs> okay, so the problem is, if the map dot meta class, the dot operator, is already overloaded for the get. How can it be overloaded for the get meta class? For the get property? If it's already overloaded for get value? Yeah. That cannot happen. That's mm -hmm. kind of weird. The good news about it is that it looks like this is the only place in Groovy when we do have conflict of two Operator overloadings doing different things. Yeah. Okay, so you definitely can trust the operator overloading mechanism of Groovy, except of this particular corner case. With the map. And can again. Thanks for can again. And he definitely already have a lifetime subscription for the <laughs> Power Rangers. Let's go. Who remember Power Okay. Yeah, who remember the Power yeah, Rangers? I remember it was <laughs> the right age when they were out. Yeah, okay. Some nostalgic Horrible. shouts. Great. So, uh, again, we have some nice range. Now it's a range of integer. This okay, not, not a range, range. of, uh, yeah. of um, uh, double. And uh, for each element in the range, print ln of the minus one of the value uh, from the range. What do you think will be the output of this? Give me your answers. From minus 1 to 8. 9 minus 1. Yep. From 0 to 9. For some reason, it doesn't like minus 1. Because it doesn't have enough parentheses, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> or just print ln of a collection from 0 to 9. And for some reason, 1 disappeared. Or d from minus 1 to Eight here as a collection. Okay. What do you think would be? I vote for A. It looks quite all right. It's very simple, very short. Have the parentheses in the right places. Although I might want to add something over here as well. <laughs> but let's keep it that way. I go with A. A. Who goes with me? With Who a? goes with A? Okay. Thank you very much, guys. Good. Who goes with B? Okay. Yeah, not enough for <laughs> Okay, that's always valid. Who goes with C? Okay, Ooh. some hands for C. Who goes with D? Ah. Yeah, okay. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, the correct answer uh, was quite a bunch. Is C. Yeah. That's puzzling. Who knows why? <laughs> the same hand, someone new? Someone new? Yeah.
Thank you very much. That was, was perfect t-shirt. Perfect t-shirt. Let's see. From Good Yay. job, Brad. It's, yeah, it's another touchdown Good. for you. Please explain. Yeah, so that's exactly that. Uh, it's actually a range which is put in an array. Okay, remember, use parentheses, not square brackets. Square the actual brackets uh, bad, parentheses is good. Good. It's very simple. <laughs> okay, so the only change to actually do what uh, we were wanting to do was to change the square bracket with parentheses, and it will have worked. Yeah, and then it will work, <laughs> by the way. Yeah. So there is only one iteration on the actual range, and we remove the actual one object from the range. And so we have from 0 to 9 without. <laughs> That was a funny one. <laughs> uh, and like I said, if you use parentheses instead of the square brackets. The subscription did it again. <laughs> All right. Good. So the funny part of this one is that first time it was delivered by Noam, who is vegan, and the mm. second time it was delivered by Andres, who is vegetarian. <laughs> but yeah. now we, we are carnivore, so we are perfectly fine with this slide. Okay. I'm going to do it because, yeah. Uh, that, because. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, sure. I love, yeah, you love it well, as well. Okay, let's do it. So, you know what? I will need your help here. Okay. So, there is some code which, are you okay with that? Because I'm not so much. Yeah. No, it's a, a nice mathematical code to find a prime number. Okay. Let's look at it again. Okay. So, yeah, the third line here makes total sense for good mathematician. Why it's there? Someone knows? Uh, you are the only good mathematician in the room. Okay. Go for it. So if you have a number that is not a prime, it's actually dividable by a number which is below the square root plus one of the number. OK? Everybody knows that. Sure. <laughs> Me, I born with this knowledge. <laughs> So what we do here is we just uh, iterate through the integer, bet integer between 2 and the square root plus 1 of the number, and we try to find if it's actually a, dividable, uh, a divider of the original number. And if we find a dividable, of course, it's not prime, so we return false. And uh, if we reached here after the iteration, it's a real prime number. So we print ln is prime for as double because here it's uh, passed as a double. And, and here are try to your find the options, my friend. True. Four is prime. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> False. Four <laughs> is not prime. That sounds good. Number format exception. exception. Yeah, why you do that as double? Yeah. An annoying guy. Missing method exception. Yeah, yeah they, they, it should be an integer here. It's really annoying, this double putting it. Yeah, anyway. Well, I go with false me. You go with? False. False. You think that this won't confuse you with number format and everything? Yeah, I will. The correct answer is true, my friend, and four is a prime number starting sure. off today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? OK. So. Why? Thank you very much. Yeah, guys, that's, that's a very good one. Uh, this is a closure. It has its own scope. Good. And the return returns from the scope, the scope of the closure. which is return from, not from the method. It's and only. each method returns null. That means that the return is ignored. And it always returns true. Okay. That's the reason why. Now, there is a very interesting story about it, how to change it. You have a number of options. You can use any. You can just write yeah. it totally differently. If you are interested about Ken's stories about how we went with it and what, what did he change, et cetera, et cetera, you have this here and this here. You will have this uh, presentation, so you'll be able to browse there. Yeah. yeah. By the way, I, I, we had uh, with the any, uh, normally you can parallelize after on, so on the any array. It's a very good option. You'll for for you'll actually do. finding the uh, the answer as fast as possible. Yeah. So the first the first actually the first solution will be changing the each to be a loop, and then the return will work 
but yeah. we still can do it very nicely with closure if we use the finder methods like find any etc instead of using the return yeah and that's another cans yeah. one and he really <laughs> rocks yeah but by the way that's a good question for the groovy guy the any method if you parallelize it as soon as he find one he stops everything <laughs> okay. 83. Jump. 83, yes. That's uh, Van Allen. That was, uh, yeah, I used to grow up in, uh, in Marseille, in south of France, and that was the music uh, in the stadium for OM, OM Van Allen Jump. I was OM. growing up in Haifa, and the music in the stadium for Maccabi Haifa was... <laughs> Van Allen also jump. Final countdown. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Here's the link. Good. <laughs> so, uh, here is a really nice looking class uh, with the jump method, which returns here are the uh, two string of the lyrics method. And uh, uh, method missing implementation for this uh, Van Allen class, which return the string lyrics for whatever method missing. And no question about name of arcs. What will be the output of the call of the jump method? Give me the options. So here are the lyrics. Here yeah, are the lyrics. Work, okay. Here are the null, for some reason. Here are the null. Okay. Startup failure. Another time. Okay. Missing method exception. Yep. What do you think? Yeah. So. I would say here are the lyrics because it looks good, but I would say here are the null because I would say that this method won't return lyrics for some reason, it will return null and then will be here on the null. I go with B. B, yeah. okay. Not very convincing. Who we'll vote for A? I did my best. <laughs> Who thinks it will actually work? I, okay. I think it will work. Who we'll vote for B? Yeah, not B. Ah, you managed to convince them. Yeah, yeah, I cool. did it. Who vote for C? Okay. Well, ah, we some people still believe that uh, <laughs> Groovy will not Didn't run. Didn't we convince you that it always compiles except <laughs> compile static when it never compiles that way? That's the difference. You don't put stat compile static, it compiles. You put compile static, it won't compile. That's, the, that's how it works. Missing method exception. Yeah, most of the wow. hands. Okay, not very puzzling. So who knows? Good job. Who knows why? Go back. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Static. Yeah. Static. Yeah. static method. Very good. Good. And why is a static method? By the way. So what happened inside the static block? This method missing is not for the object, and you're calling this static method, and then method missing is not executed. Okay. Right. There is no object, so there is no method missing. There is the instance is. Null, so the method missing will never be called. So who knows how to fix it if you really want to do uh, this kind of code? There is another uh, beautiful way of fixing it. So this is the output, by the way. When, when you do run uh, the code, the missing method exception, no signature for Van Allen dot lyrics. Uh, Very clear, and then you just can figure it out. You can figure it out by yourself. Uh, so there is actually a way to do method missing on static class. Okay. Why uh, here is only one underscore and not two? Yeah, that's good. Right? That's a good question. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. Just roll a dice. Sometimes one, sometimes two. Yep. <laughs> uh, and actually use good that's object oriented and stop using static. That's what okay. you should do. Just write good object oriented code <laughs> without static context. That will be the way. New okay. Van Allen jump, and that would work. OK, now I have a very good puzzle for you. Mathematics? About the pie. You sure? It's the food, <laughs> it's the number. We all love pie. Including, I love the food part. Uh, yes, quite a lot of numbers. Yeah. Yep. So here we go. Double value 3. Print len value dot 14 is double. <laughs> very simple. Is pi a double? I always give you simple puzzlers, mathematically yeah. correct. Pi is a, there is a method, uh, is, number, is irrational number. Two, exactly as we love it. Is irrational number. Yeah. Real. It's prime and power of two in the same time. Yeah. 
right? Okay. Um, true. true, it is double. Yeah. Missing property exception. Hmm. False, it's not a double. Missing method exception. Hmm. I think I know what you did here. You got yeah. me? Yeah, yeah. You got dot 14 here. Dot 14? Good job. Yeah. Like the dot, yeah. So it's a property, so it's going to do dot 14. So it's going to do a missing property exception. OK. So you go for missing property exception? D. Uh, B, yes. Exactly. Who thinks it's A? 3.14 is? Is a double. A double. Okay. That's a good answer. Who thinks B? Because B, Fred B, got B, it this time. Missing problem. Nobody trusts me. It's a freaking amazing. I told you, this is what the groovy <laughs> puzzlers do to people. Their credibility <laughs> goes to. <laughs> quite totally. How about C? False. Okay, some people actually think that 3.14 is not, not a double. double. And what about missing method, method uh, exception? Missing method A. Ah. Yeah, okay, okay, a okay. couple of things. It's false. It's false. Who knows why? Who knows why? 3.0. Yeah. Thank you, you very good. much. That's definitely a t-shirt. Who did three for? The reason. <laughs> ah, sorry. The reason, <laughs> guys, the reason Fred was mistaken is because Groovy is very, very smart. <laughs> it's not a property because it cannot be a property. Because 14 cannot be a property because it's not a valid Java identifier. So dot name can be a property, but 14 cannot be a property. It's not a valid name. And if you trust IntelliJ, you can see by the color that actually IntelliJ Peter knows. Bruno. The author of Groovy support in IntelliJ promises you that you will see the difference that this can be property and this is a string. It great comes, by the way, sorry. <laughs> yeah, the first one. Okay, so this is the correct answer. 3.0.4. Now this is a very valid Spring Framework version. But this <laughs> is not enough. <laughs> OK. Right. OK. So who knows what RSVP stands for? So. Whoa. Whoa. Guys, really? OK. So you need to ask the French guys. And we have a bunch of them, <laughs> one of them actually on stage. <laughs> so enlighten us, what it stands for. Uh, uh, s'il vous plaît, uh, retournez s'il vous plaît. Answer, please. <laughs> this is what it means. S'il vous plaît, yeah. The, the French, they really like to make it complicated. It's actually please, it's three words, four words. S'il vous plaît, yeah. Go ahead. Where OK, <laughs> so an RSVP class. Uh, we have a class with the number of attending set to one. We create this class here, and uh, we get the value of the, the attending, which is one. We add one to uh, this uh, return here, def attendee, and we print ln the results. Okay, quite simple code. Yep. There is no Beautiful square. Beautiful code. You wrote it. There is no square see. root. A lot of parentheses, by the way, this time. Yeah, plenty of parentheses. <laughs> that's 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 a very good code. I like it. So. What do you think will be? Startup failure? No, no compile static, it will compile. OK. One, for some reason. Uh, that's very clear. You know why? No ah. parentheses here? Ah, you need more parentheses here? You want more? Of Two? It will behave as expected. Yeah. Missing property exception. That doesn't make much sense. I would go with one because there are no parentheses here. So my answer is one. OK. Startup failure. Who goes with startup failure? Who goes with A? Yeah, that's, ah. I don't know why you do it. Uh, we, we already got the thing. <laughs> it always compiles until we put compile static. How about one? B. No parentheses. Nice. Uh, Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Peter. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate Only it. Only Peter supports you. you yeah, see. yeah, Peter. I can always <laughs> trust Peter. OK, how about two? Two. 
Ah, okay. Well. Yeah, Good. There is one puzzler that behaves well. There is some believer. Good. Goofy Good. believer. Good. Missing property exception. D. Yeah, that doesn't make it. Okay. Fred, you see what's happening? You write a beautiful code and people actually believe it behaves. <laughs> so the right answer is A. Startup failure. Won't. Good job. It won't come there is only one, huh? It was You're yes, good. Right? You know why? One, one? <laughs> yes. Good job. Yeah. He, uh, no, Guillaume had the right answer, but it doesn't count. <laughs> no space here will. It, it will work. That's, that's the correct answer, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> no, that's not the reason. It will do a plus one, actually. That's, the space doesn't matter. OK, so let's, let's give you a little bit of hint. This is the actual output, and this is the IntelliJ, how it looks like. Multiple compilation error, RSVP Groovy. Unable so, to resolve class. Def attendee, the, here, invite.attending. Any, anyone one error. clue now? Unable to resolve class in vid.attending. So, what is the reason? It thinks you're casting. It thinks you're casting. <laughs> it's casting. Yeah. Thank you very much. much. Yes, yes, we have, we have another t shirt. <laughs> so, that's for the first time. Stop with the freaking parentheses. <laughs> yeah, so, this is a class cast, guys. <laughs> this is a package name. And this is a class name. <laughs> and this is a, is a bug <laughs> in the grammar. Yeah, now that's the perfect time. OK. Actually, no, there is quite some good logic in the grammar. Whatever doesn't look like a casting will not be evaluated by, with a casting. So you can do just new. And you will keep your parentheses. That, uh, so you just inline That's the okay. new. That's fine. OK. You start to do the parentheses on the good spot. That's and fine as well. That didn't make any sense to do uh, a parentheses again. Whatever and doesn't look like a cast will work. That's, it's that simple. So yeah, we should have barred the guy, by the way, the lips. The list guy, yeah, yeah. no parentheses. That's the only puzzler where putting parentheses actually put you into trouble. Yeah, <laughs> OK. <laughs> so um, the t-shirt goes to Cedric because of so many reasons. Go ahead. So he's a French guy, so and he this was RSVP. a French puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> he's the one to blame because he actually wrote the code. And he's going to fix it, I believe. Exactly. OK, now this is the perfect timing for conclusions, I would say. Well, the most important thing, I believe you already got it through the presentation, but just to stress it, write readable code. <laughs> and then you won't get most of those puzzles. <laughs> yeah. If you do need to love to need tricks and you use them, do yourself a favor and comment them. And as you saw, sometimes it's just a bug. Not as frequent as you want to blame Groovy. <laughs> it's actually your bug <laughs> and not Groovy. In very real case, cases, it is bug in the language itself. Study code analysis do great. Most of the puzzlers wouldn't yes. happen if we would show you how the code looks in IntelliJ. OK? It knows most of the stuff that we show. And the errors and the, the, the messages are very, very good. Read the mail. <laughs> Some of the things are very, even from the most bizarre puzzles that we saw, are documented. Traits is one example. And static, um, um, static missing method is another. Yeah. There is good documentation. Could be better. Contributions welcome, as Guillaume said. But read whatever there is now. And don't code like, don't my, code like my brother. <laughs> Couple of housekeeping in the end. We have just started. Okay, we need to come up with the uniform. So if you have any ideas for uniform, which is not used in any other computer-oriented gigs, 
Like yeah. we cannot do heads for obvious reasons, <laughs> but think about something. We will be helpful and maybe we will be able to produce it for Java 1 yeah. as well. If you have something that looks like a proper puzzler, please send it to us by mail if it's a long one. You can tweet it if it fits into Twitter, into tweet. It's nice as well. And we will send you a t-shirt. And we actually do <laughs> send t-shirts. People get our amazing t-shirts. All right? If you have positive feedback, praise us on Twitter. That's the groovy puzzle handle. That's Fred. That's me. If you have some negative feedback, we will love to hear it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, guys.